and welcome back to Hack 5. A lot of you have been asking for a tour of the van, and so we're just going to give you a quick one here. There's actually going to be a lot changing about it soon, but so I figured I'd give you a kind of a before look at it, and then here in a few months we'll probably do this again with a bunch of the changes. So starting off, let's give you a look at the exterior. So the van itself is a 2012 Mercedes Sprinter 2500. It has the V6 3.0 liter turbocharged engine, and it actually moves pretty good for as little weight that's currently in it. On the back here, we have a ladder so that you can access the roof and solar panels and all that. We have some in external antennas for the modem. You guys have seen that mod before. There is a bike rack for my electric bike that uh, we'll be doing a video on shortly. Otherwise, it's pretty plain on the outside. You can see just a hint that there's solar panels up there. And if you're a little further away, you can kind of see the roof fans, but it's pretty stealth. And now let's have a look at the inside. Starting off, we have our step that has just a nice piece of carpet on it, and that's simply because when you're in the desert, you track a lot of sand in, so having a good way to uh, dispose of that's good. Now on the inside here, a lot of people have asked how I use the bathroom. That seems to be everyone's primary concern, and well, there's a toilet. This is a chemical toilet or porta potty. As the name implies, you just take it, you use it, and then you've got, you know, a week to two weeks, depending on how often you go, and you can dump that at any uh, outhouse, porta potty, uh, dump station, whatever. This is a lot easier than having a dedicated black tank below the van because you can dump it just about anywhere. You don't need a dedicated RV hookup. Behind it, we have a scrub -a bag. And that is actually how I do my laundry. I toss a couple days of dirty clothes in there. You toss some soap in, some water, shake it up, and uh, you know agitate it for a few minutes, and then do a rinse cycle. You have clean laundry, you just hang dry it. Super energy efficient, super space efficient, works great. Above the cab, you can see a custom shelf I installed. This is just a wood shelf coated in uh, carpet there. And this is where I keep all my clothes, towels, and soft stuff so that if it ever did fall, it wouldn't be uh, super catastrophic. It's got some pretty skookum metal brackets, so I'm not too worried about it. And it also is the hanger for my curtain. Now this is actually acoustic sound deadening material. Super thick, super dense material that captures echoes, road noise, and all of that. It also makes the cab very quiet when I'm driving, so any of the rattles you might get from the back don't get up front. It also is completely opaque, and you can't see any light from the outside when you have it actually properly latched to the Velcro. Turning off to the left, we have my cabinet structure. Now, these are just cabinets from RB Components. These were in here when I got the van. And this is my favorite cabinet because it's actually the organized one. This is all my drone parts, robotics parts, electronics, Raspberry Pis, Hack 5 gear, soldering equipment, and so much more. In the left cabinet, I have drones parts, uh, personal effects, that kind of stuff. And then in the right side, I have, you guessed it, drone parts and more maker equipment. So that's how I keep bringing you all the cool projects from on the road. And then we get over to the desk. We have a 27 inch monitor. This is actually running on a DC to DC converter so that it actually is powered off of a 12 volt battery bank and is super efficient. It draws less than 20 watts. I have connected to it a Chromecast, which is how I watch YouTube in the evenings. Uh, su again, super efficient, draws like three watts. And then I also have a USB hub for my little laptop, as well as a docking station for my phone. And I do most of my recording and actual day-to-day -day work on my phone. Off to the left, we have the modded Muddy with the external antennas. You guys know and love that. I've made a few videos on that. Those go, the antenna cables go under the bed and to the back door. Now, just under the desk, we have the 3D printer. Now, this is actually in a cabinet. It's not properly mounted yet, but it's super rugged, and I've not had any issues with it coming out of alignment or anything going down the road. Now, I don't print while I'm driving. However, it is, again, super efficient. This thing draws less than 80 watts while printing, even with the heat bed on. Great little printer, super rugged. It's actually taken a couple of falls and still keeps on ticking. Under that, I have some filament and spare propane. Now, I actually have a diesel heater. The propane is just a backup in case something happens to the diesel heater and I'm in a cold environment. It'll get me through a few nights. Now, sitting in a van is a difficult thing. You can't just have a rolling computer chair. Otherwise, it would be going everywhere. You'd have to secure it. So this is actually a boat chair, like from a small boat. So I have that mounted to some black iron pipe so I can actually unthread it and move it out of the way 
And we just did that today because we went and picked up a bunch of 4 by 8 sheet material because some big changes are coming to the van. The seat flips up like so. I find it comfortable enough for the two to six hours a day that I sit at the desk doing work. Off to the left, we have a cabinet structure. This used to be where I held the old AC200 battery bank, and it took up so much space here. I've since removed that and now have food storage. This is my super efficient 12 volt fridge. It slides out and then you can open it up just like a cooler. It uses so little power that uh, even in the PNW when my solar's not great, it could run it forever. The bed is just about three feet off the deck, and this allows me to have great storage under it for garage space. The bed itself is a 10-inch Amazon uh, Essentials or whatever memory foam mattress. It's squished in a little bit. I have about 68 inches of sleeping space. I'm 5'10". It's a little tight. You sleep diagonally. It works fine. On the back wall, I have a blanket hung up. Again, another acoustic blanket. This helps keeps it super quiet in the van, and you also don't end up brushing your arm against the cold metal. The back doors are insulated, but they still get colder. Under the bed, like I said, we have the garage space. And that is, uh, yeah, well, it's like anyone's garage. It's a utility space where you just dump your extra stuff. And it's even more chaotic at the moment because we have some big projects we're working on. Oh, I did forget something at the back of the van. So let me open it up here for you real quick. And excuse the lack of lighting, that is uh, on the list to do. But that's the battery bank. This is the system I just uploaded a video on last week. And as you can see, it is nice and out of the way and it leaves room for all kinds of other stuff back here. I still needed to install the latches on it, but it's been doing the job. Today's the first day that I haven't actually had a full charge due to uh, the weather here but uh, I still have over 70% of my battery bank, so I could probably go for four to five days before I need to actually intervene and do external charging. Now, as you all can see, I have a sink here with actual running water. Now, that is actually, instead of having a system below the van or in the back that plums water all the way through, oh yeah, microwave, this thing's great. Uh, I have a freshwater tub, a spare freshwater tub, and a gray water. And all that's in here is a little tiny DC pump and this actually has a switch. So if you hear that, before the water actually starts flowing, there's a switch right there. And that just tells the pump to turn on and push water up through there. And yeah, it's super simple. There's no gray tank or dedicated tank in the back. I can take these jugs to any rest stop or gas station even and just fill them up. I don't have to have a dedicated RV fill port. And that's part of the way I stay super flexible and mobile on the road. I'm not always looking for an RV park or having to pay RV park fees. Again, with the toilet, it same story. I can dump it anywhere that is actually has a sewer system because you don't want to dump black. Now... Another thing people have asked about is a shower. How do I shower on the road? Well, the answer to that's pretty simple. For now, I use camp showers when I'm at a camp that has one, or I will use truck stop showers if I'm really needing something I can pay for it. Occasionally, I'll just do a sponge bath if I'm not feeling up for going into town. That said, I do miss the feeling of a good shower and not having to go into a public place to take one. So you might have seen these marks on the floor. Yeah, we're working on something cool. Again, we'll update this in the future. Some of the other builds I've seen have things in weird locations or they have cabinets partially on one side and then the other. So you end up feeling very cramped. Now, I'm not prone to claustrophobia or anything. However, I know some people are and they don't really like the van lifestyle because of that. However, having all the cabinets on one side and just having what will eventually be a kitchen area here, it makes it feel so open. The greatest thing about a van is there's no wrong way to do it. Like I said, I preferred all the cabinets off to one side, so it's big and open over here. But if you have any comments or suggestions, make sure to leave a comment down below. Uh, I've been Glitch. This has been Hack 5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack 5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.